coupons. Others ravaged the free sample stations without buying a thing. But returning contestant Mark Cunningham takes it to a whole new level. What do you do, Mark? Well, kind of a lot of different things, but I'm kind of a frequent flyer junkie. Um, frequent if, flyer junkie. Yeah, like if, I'll, if there's a good fare from Philadelphia to L.A., for example, very low. I'll fly back and forth two or three times in two or three days just to kind of build up the miles. Don't you have a job? You can just go anytime you want? Um, it's worth taking some vacation time to even Oh, I that. see. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And, and where have you gone after accumulating these miles? Where, where um, it's definitely worth it. I've been to Bali. Um, That's lovely. And I was in Egypt two months ago. Really? So, so it pays off. Stick with the, yeah, stick yeah, with the same good. airline. Why don't you tell the audience what else you do? You, you claim to be a doctor. Well, I know uh, what. Uh, no. <laughs> what? Like, Come on, Mark. All right, all right. Well, only when I'm calling restaurants to get a reservation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you say? When well, you're calling me, hello. Well, um, I'd like a table tonight for uh, Dr. Cunningham. Please. Dr. Cunningham. Yes. Okay. And they, you tend to kind of get through to the good tables, or a table at all, and. I guess my only fear is if something would really happen to like the table next to me, somebody had a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. What would I do? But... Yeah, calling Dr. Cunningham. Right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, listen, doctor, you're doing, a, you're doing a terrific job here. Last time out, you got to $8,000 without losing, using any of those lifelines, which means you still have them sitting there, all three of them. And when you get to the $25,000 mark, we're going to give you that fourth lifeline if you get the question right. And we have your Capital One check made out to you in the amount of $1 million. Right. <laughs> so, Mark, I think, I think I know the answer to this, but are you ready? I am very ready, yes. Audience, are you ready? Yes! Yeah! And let's go Mark Cunningham, Dr. Cunningham, $16,000. Due to the distinct way their consonants are pronounced, the Khoisan languages of Africa are also known as what? Hum languages, snap languages, hiss languages, click languages. I'm glad I have those lifelines because I think I need to ask the audience. All right, they're ready. Audience, Mark needs your help. If you're ready, vote now. Okay, 76% of this audience believes it is click languages. Nothing else even comes close there, Mark. Well, I have great confidence in this audience. Really? <laughs> great. You know what? They love themselves too. There you go. Well, they know there's a doctor in the house. Right? <laughs> okay. um, my answer is D. Like language is final answer. Confidence well placed. You got it for six. All right. Minutes. Nice going. This is for twenty-five thousand and that fourth lifeline we talked about. Because it can cause damage to the intestine. Which of these foods is off limits to a person who suffers from celiac disease? Poached eggs, rice, wheat bread, steak tartare. You're a doctor. This should be better. Yeah, I was going to say. I'm... <laughs> um, let's do the 50-50. Okay. Computer, please randomly take away two of the wrong answers. Okay, it's either eggs or bread, poached eggs or wheat bread, celiac disease. Uh, I'd like to phone a friend. All right, who would you like to call, Mark? Uh, my friend Micah. Micah? Yes. Okay, we're going to get Micah on the line. Hello. Hey, Micah, it's Meredith from Millionaire, and I'm here with Mark. A lot of M's, huh? Hi, Meredith. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm glad to hear that. Mark is really good, too. He's going for $25,000. $25,000. Just need your help, okay? Okay. All right, Mark, you have 30 seconds. Okay. Your time starts now. Be because it can cause damage to the intestine, which of these foods is off limits to a person who suffers from celiac disease? C-E-L-I-A-C, celiac disease. 
poached eggs or wheat bread? Whole wheat. Uh, poached eggs or wheat bread? Whole wheat or what? Poached eggs or wheat bread? Whole wheat or poached eggs? Yeah, which is, which, is, which is off limits? Whole wheat is done. He said whole wheat is death. <laughs> Apparently, he's also a doctor. <laughs> wow. Well, no, he gave you an answer. He definitely gave you an answer. Yeah. And actually, he is a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically enough. Um, uh, I don't know who to believe it anymore. Um, let's see, wheat bread, final answer. Def, definitely wheat bread. Back after <laughs> oh. And we're back with Mark Cunningham. It took him three lifelines, but he got this Capital One check for $25,000, which is a wonderful place yep. to be. <laughs> what do you need the money for? Um, well, I have a car that has 165,000 miles on it. Which really? Which could use replacing. And um, so that's kind of first thought. Are you going to still do this frequent flyer stuff? You... I'll probably do the frequent flyer stuff and maybe stay in nicer hotels. Now. Oh, when you go there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once I get there. So. Well, you know, you play your cards right, and next time you call for a reservation in a, you know, in a restaurant, you won't have to say, Dr. Cunningham. You'll just say, it's Mark the Millionaire. Right. Say, that would be great. Yeah, that'll do it. That would be awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So, and you're looking good, Mark. You have 25000 as I said, which means you earn that fourth lifeline, going for 50000 Five away from a million. Are you ready to play? Yes. Okay, let's play. <laughs> All right, Mark, for $50,000, what actress renamed herself at the age of 14 after a minor character from The Great Gatsby? Meryl Streep, Sigourney Weaver, Annette Bening, Charlize Theron. Charlie's there, I'm not sure. I need to switch the question. You do? You're not yeah, sure? Okay. I'm not sure. Let's see what, I think I know. Let's see what the answer was. I think it's an ordinary. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay, there you go. But we're going to switch okay. out. I know, and I don't get a dime. <laughs> you know what? We're going to switch out of this question okay. for another one valued at $50,000. For $50,000, dinosaurs first appeared on Earth approximately how many years ago? Five million, twenty-five million, one hundred twenty-five million, two hundred thirty million. Free guess, guess. Mark. You have twenty-five thousand. The twenty-five million final answer. No. Not twenty-five million. It was two hundred thirty million. But hey. my pal Rabbity. I've had him for about 20 years and he makes me feel really happy. Oh, he does. Okay. When were you released? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too I long have, ago. You know what? I have a Sylvester. You know, like Sylvester Puddy yeah. I have that stuff that I take him everywhere. I know it's a little nuts, but he really, you know, he's been all over the world. And then we're proud that he's here with you at Millionaire Thank then. Thank you very happy much. to have him. You know the rules. I think I do. I'm talking to Rabbit, yes. Uh, you know, <laughs> and you know the lifeline. I do. Are you ready to play? I'm ready to play, Meredith. Okay, then let's play, Karen. Okay. All right, Karen, so $100. Which of these groups requires that its members be between 5 foot 6 inches and 5 foot 10 and a half inches tall and proficient in jazz and tap dancing? Boston Symphony Orchestra, Radio City Rockettes, Boys Choir of Harlem, Meredith Vieira's <laughs> Entourage. 
I would say that that would be those long-stemmed American beauties, B, the Radio City Rockettes, final answer. And they are that indeed. <laughs> this is for 200, Karen. Which of these movies features numerous scenes that take place inside a spacecraft? Ten Little Indians, Ocean's Eleven, Twelve Angry Men, Apollo 13. D, Apollo 13, final answer. I would say you are right. $200. Karen. When it functions at a slow pace, what modern convenience is often referred to as the worldwide weight? The internet, microwave, DVD player, escalator. A, the internet. Yes, it is. You have it. <laughs> this is for 500. Which of these poker terms is also a common prefix meaning before? Pot, ante, fold, bluff. Well, in my family, everybody forgets to. So I would say B, final answer, Auntie. Yes, Auntie. <laughs> For $1,000, Karen. Also called the auditory tubes, the eustachian tubes connect the throat to which of these body parts? Heart, stomach, lungs, ears. Auditory tubes. You know this one? I would say the answer is D. Ears. <laughs> yes, Rabbity, it is ears. You got it for a thousand dollars. Karen and Rabbity off to a very good start. We're going to take a We are back with Karen Griffith and her 20 year old buddy, Rabbity, who's bringing her some good luck here. You're doing great so far. You have $1,000. You know you can't leave with less than that. Oh, thank heaven. You're also a freelance editor, and, and you, even to the menus, you even check out to find mistakes, right? It's really, a, when, when I'm at a restaurant, I could not order until I proofread the menu. One time I was, at, <laughs> I was at this restaurant looking at fish dishes, and they had something I knew had to be wrong. It said deep fried, well, I think it was supposed to be carp, but it said deep fried buffalo crap. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Lost my appetite. <laughs> How was it? Uh, <laughs> I'm a vegetarian now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you point it out to them? Uh, no, actually I didn't. I thought uh. it was a good enough joke to let it ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, Karen, your, your boyfriend Tony is in the audience. I want to yes, say a quick is. hello to Tony. Nice to see you, Tony. You we welcome married. you to the show. Thank along you. with Karen. <laughs> You are going, Karen, for $2,000. You're 10 away from a million. And the best news is you have all three lifelines. Great shape. You ready to keep playing? I'm ready, Meredith. All right, let's play. For $2,000, Karen, in the 1950s, what country went through a period of de-Stalinization to ease the conditions imposed by its late ruler? Soviet Union. Turkey, Austria, Egypt. This sounds like desalinization, but they didn't get rid of salt in the Soviet Union. They got rid of... My answer is A, Soviet Union, final answer. It certainly is. You have it right. All right, Karen, for $4,000. The 2007 reality show, Age of Love, helped popularize what slang term for an older woman who is interested <laughs> in younger men? Lioness, cheetah, cougar, tigress. Wow. Now, huh? I'm afraid to say I did watch most of this show. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm afraid to say I, I know a couple of these. <laughs> Are you one of them? I'm not a... Uh, not, Tony's right here, Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Of course you're not one of them. <laughs> and my answer would be C, Cougar, final answer. Yeah, but you know a few. You got it for $4,000. <laughs> All right. Now, look at you go now for $8,000. Passed in 1993, the Handgun Violence Prevention Act is named after what member of the Reagan administration? James Brady, George Shultz, Casper Weinberger, 
Donald Regan. This man and his wife have done a lot of good things, and I am happy I know the answer. A, James Brady, final answer. They certainly have. You have a great job. Going for 16,000. Often served with sushi as a palate cleanser, gari is a type of pickled what? Cabbage, mushroom, seaweed, ginger. I hate sushi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to ask the audience. No problem, audience. Karen needs your help. Often served with sushi as a palate cleanser, gari is a type of pickled what? If you're ready, vote now. Okay, 58% believe it's ginger, 34% say seaweed. The other two don't even come close. It's not a bad number. It's not overwhelming, I thought but it's not a bad number. I'm sorry, I thought it was ginger, so I'm really glad that the audience knows more than I do. And I will say D, final answer. Well, in this case, they did. You have 16. we've learned that you like to check, I mean, you can't help yourself. You check everything, even the menus, to make sure things are spelled correctly. You, you've traveled with Rabbity. I do indeed. Everywhere. For 20 years you've been doing that. At least. All over the world. And you, you need this money because you'd like to travel a little bit more. I'd love to travel a little bit more. I've never, well, the boyfriend would really like to see the South Seas, and I'd like to see them again. And I'd also, well, there are other places I'd like to head, but Bora Bora is on the list. Bora Bora is on the Doesn't list. That That's, sound great? That sounds very good. It sounds almost as good as that deep fried buffalo uh, <laughs> part. <laughs> well, if you want to go to Bora Bora, I don't see why you shouldn't go, Karen, because you I've are doing... I've always dreamed of it. Well, then I want to fulfill that dream. That's why I'm here. You're doing a great job. You're going for $25,000 at this point, Karen, and that fourth lifeline, six questions away from a million. You still have two other lifelines up there. Are you ready to keep playing? I'm ready, Meredith. All right, then let's play. <laughs> Karen, this is for $25,000. Founded in 1989 at Emporia State University, the National Teachers Hall of Fame is located in what U.S. state? North Carolina, Florida, Kansas, Michigan. This leapt into my head before I saw the other answers. And the question is, am I willing to risk my, you know, trust my head? But I think, I think I do trust my head on this. My answer is C, Kansas, final answer. You were right to trust your head. <laughs> and you have the fourth lifeline. You and Rabbity be back tomorrow? You betcha. Okay, I'll be here as well, you folks. I hope you join us then. From New York, everybody, bye-bye. today with her boyfriend Tony, her good luck Rabbity, and the $25,000 she won last time. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, Meredith. Thank you very much. Now, you said last time that you'd like to spend some of this money going to Bora Bora, which is very nice, and I wanted to ask Tony, your boyfriend, Tony, how would you like to spend the money? Have you thought about it? Hell yeah. Bora Bora. <laughs> <laughs> she makes the plans for Bora Bora, I'm there. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Good enough. <laughs> I also know as much as you love Rabbity, you love 
panda bears very much and you have spent a lot of time in fact you've seen every panda there is in the united states i thought well we found i was on a one year mission to see every panda in north in america and i thought i'd seen every single one and then i discovered i was working with an out of date panda census oh <laughs> and i've missed a pair and they're in memphis so I'm going to Graceland, and I'm going to see those pandas in Memphis. All right, good enough. <laughs> and look at you can do it, Karen. <laughs> like I said, you're on your way easily to Memphis. You have twenty-five thousand dollars, which means that you have that fourth lifeline. You had two others still up there, five away from a million dollars, going for fifty thousand. And we have the Capital One check already made out in your name. This will take you to Bora Bora and back several times. Boy. Karen Griffith, one million dollars. <laughs> so, well, you want to look at it? Gravity just wants to look. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thanks to give it back. <laughs> Karen, are you ready to play? I'm ready to play, Meredith. Audience, are you ready to play? <laughs> then let's play Millionaire. All right, Karen, for $50,000. Ronald McDonald currently holds what position within the McDonald's Corporation? The Arch Chairman, President of McDonald Land, Chief Happiness Officer, the Big Cheeseburger. Hmm. What a terribly interesting question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Meredith, I'd like to use my 50-50 now. Okay. Computer, please randomly take away two of the wrong answers. It sounds like a very big marketing meeting to me. I'm going to gamble on this one and not switch the question. My answer is... C, Chief Happiness Officer, officer final mm -hmm. answer. However you figured it out, you figured it out right. Yeah. 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 How are you feeling? I feel terrific. I, I really do. You should. I know I'm going to see pandas. I'm going to go swimming in the South Seas. Uh, <laughs> it's a good feeling. Well, you're going for 100000 at this point, Karen. One of the great art forgers, Han von Mehren, gained notoriety in the 1940s after forging several works in the style of what artist? George Seurat, Johann Vermeer, Rembrandt van Rijn, Claude Monet. Old colleague and dear friend of mine. We've worked together before, and she's very, very bright. Okay, we're going to get Deirdre on the line. Hello. Hi, Deirdre. It's Meredith from Millionaire. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. Uh, get ready for this one, okay? Okay. Karen's going for one hundred thousand dollars. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is where you come in. <laughs> Are you ready? You'll do it, Karen. All right, Karen, you have 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Great art forger, Han von M-E-E-G-E-R-E-N, gained notoriety in the 40s after forging works in the style of what artist? Seurat, Vermeer, Rembrandt, or Monet? Claude Monet. Han von M-E-E-G-E-R-E-N. Seurat, Vermeer, Rembrandt, or Monet? Um, I think it's... Um, oh. One second. Dog my cats. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before, but I can, I can figure out what it means. <laughs> In wow. that case, 
we switch the question because I'm not sure enough, but I think it's Vermeer. All right, let's see what the answer mm -hmm. is. You're switching now. Ah. Oh. Arp, arp, arp. Yeah. <laughs> That's what are you right. gonna do? Dog my cats. What we're gonna do, we're gonna switch out of this question. Mm -hmm. We're gonna move forward. Another question, please, computer, valued at one hundred thousand dollars. For one hundred thousand dollars, Lake Victoria, the second largest freshwater lake in the world, does not border which of these countries? Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda. Bodies of water, my least favorite topic. <laughs> Well, you did travel, though, so maybe... Yeah, I have not made it to Lake Victoria. Over. But this is a free guess, right, Meredith? No, it's not. No, it's not a free guess. No, you have 50,000. You guess wrong, and you'll drop to 25. I'm not much of a gambler, and I'm going to have to walk away. But my guess would be... Would you like to know what I guess? My, sure. But you know what I have to do mm -hmm. is first make sure that you're walking away as yes. a final. I'm going to say that I'm going to walk away final. Okay, so we okay. know that, all right. right. It's all clear. Uh, I would say it's Rwanda, D. All right, let's see what the answer was. Oh! oh.